So transitivity is one of the most basic ideas that is used in economics. And what it says, not only economics, actually, in the whole of the social sciences. And what it says basically is that if we have three items, and for whatever reasons, uh, X comes before Y, and Y comes before uh, Z, then X comes before Z. Now, sometimes it's obvious. It turns out, however, that uh, not everything uh, is transitive, and there are situations where people don't behave in a transitive way. Uh, for example, uh, transitivity is used in economics to uh, claim that if a person prefers option A to option B, and he prefers option B to option C, then he must also prefer option A to option C. Now, this sounds obvious, and how can it be uh, otherwise? But it turns out that in many experiments, people don't behave like that. There are many experiments, and I'm going to mention some. And as a matter of fact, let me tell you right away. I'm going to show you examples where you too will think that uh, uh, you prefer A to B and you prefer B to C, and nonetheless, you prefer C to A. So uh, economics for more than 50 years is struggling with the question of how to uh, reconcile evidence with theory, uh, especially, uh, among other things, with respect to transitivity. And what uh, this paper is about is we're going to show that already in the Talmud there are several examples for such cycles. Tell is a story where uh, a cycle may actually be not a problem but a solution. And here's the story. It's quite a complicated one uh, and still uh, I think uh, rather interesting. So you know what Ketubah is. Ketubah is what uh, 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 the, the, the contract uh, between uh, the man and the woman uh, in which uh, the man outlines properties, uh, whatever his wife will get upon one of two possible cases that they get a divorce or that uh, uh, she becomes a widow. Uh, here's the, the simple story. Uh, a man married two women, one after the other, and he wrote, he has only one field. And later on, uh, he sold this field to another person, and then he died. So, now, in terms of uh, the dates of the transactions, we have the first woman who married the man first, then the second woman, and then the field was sold. So th there's no doubt here who has the priority. Be and indeed, when the uh, husband dies, uh, the first woman takes uh, 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 size, 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 the field, and that's it. Okay, so here's the not-so-simple story, and there is even more complicated one later. A man married two women, uh, one after the other, and he had only one field, uh, which he later sold to a buyer. And the first wife, and this is where the problem starts, the first wife gave a written declaration to the buyer saying, I have no claim whatsoever upon you. Okay, and now the uh, husband dies. She gives a letter to the buyer, I have no claims whatsoever upon you, uh, against you, upon you. Okay, and now the, the uh, husband dies, and this is what the Mishnah says. Right now, the buyer holds the field. Now, the first wife cannot take the field away from him because she wrote the letter. However, the second wife, she can come, she can go to the buyer and tell him, I married my late husband before he sold the field to you, and therefore the field should be transferred to me. And she's right. The Mishnah says, yes, she takes, she says, she will uh, size the, the field from the buyer. Now, the first wife will come to the second wife and will say, you hold a field, but I have a priority over you regarding this field because I was before you. Now, it is true that they said that they don't have any claims against the buyer, but they never said that they don't have claims against you. And I was before you, and the Mishnah says, yes, the, the field should be transferred to the first wife. And now, the buyer goes to the first wife and says, well, here I have a letter from you in which you said that you don't have any claims upon me. And the Mishnah says, yes, the, the field should be transferred 
to be the buyer. Moreover, the Mishnah says that they should go on forever until they reach a compromise. So here we have a cycle and the Mishnah says uh, we're not going to offer, uh, they have to reach a solution by themselves. Okay, to uh, some, uh, what uh, this paper shows is that uh, violation of uh, transitivity appear in the Talmud and they may be bad, as was the story of the uh, offerings, irrelevant, as was the first story, or actually even good. And uh, I'm particularly interested myself in the uh, idea that uh, violations of transitivity may be good because this may give us a tool to solve conflicts that, as far as I know, doesn't exist in the literature. Instead of uh, forcing courts to solve a situation, create a mechanism that will force uh, the, uh, the, the claimants by themselves to reach a solution out of court. That's it.